How's it going guys? So today's video is going to be short and sweet. So I've been working on some serial stuff just to mess around and kill some time. Um, so I got one tick per bit serial working here um, that's doing binary one tick per bit serial. Um, so let me... I don't know if this will work. Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah, so using this texture pack that somebody on the server made, trap doors look like lamps because they actually update quicker than a lamp would update in the game because the lamp is buggy. So this way you can see serial streams moving much nicer. Um, so anyway, let's enter. So this is the most significant bit because of the way I built this, but anyway, ignore that. So like, let's just do uh, the nice test where we send three ones in, in a row, two off, and then 101 like that, just to see if it processes serial correctly. This over here is a transmission line, just to simulate it like actually going across some sort of distance. And then this here is the circuit that latches it in place so you can see it. Um, so the last thing I set, sent was 11100111. So this time we should have something different where the last three, this one is off. So to, uh, to clock this, you press this button up here. And what it does is it, this is a T flip flop where this will either turn on or off. When these turn on or off, it'll toggle the state down here. And when you toggle the state down here, these um, observers will update. And when you update an observer, it pulses at a one tick pulse. So what you do is you send this one tick pulse before that one, before that one, and you just you delay them like that. And that's how you get a serial pulse coming through here. This here is meant for me to watch it just to make sure that it was encoding correctly uh, at the first stage. And then I had like a similar thing over here, but it was working, so I got rid of it. Um, so anyway, if we watch it while I press this button, so you can see we move across here like that, it comes in and we latch in 11100101. And the way this works is this here is enough time, is timed for the delay of this signal here, plus the delay of eight ticks for this here. So that's how this delay works. It's, it's timed on that delay. And then this is an S, uh, RS NOR latch or an SR latch, whatever you want to call it where there's eight ticks of delay on the reset. So what'll happen is if, if you watch, when I press this button, it turns off for eight ticks because what happens is it powers through here and gives eight ticks before it resets. So you can make it any delay length timer using a system like that. But now I want to show you something neat, uh, which is two tick per bit or two tick per analog bit serial. Okay, so over here you can see something that looks a little bit different than that serial device. And this serial device is actually operating on analog values. So what we can do is we can reset all of our values, turn them all off, so we can enter some new ones. What I can also do is clear this here with this button, and then we can get ready to send in some new data. So let's send in some random data. And if we look at what we sent, the first thing that's going to go in Oops. is a 5 and then a 10. Oh, I always seem to do that. 5 and then 10. And then we're going to get a 4 and then a 10 again. 5, 10, 4, 10. Huh? Maybe this shouldn't be 10 though. Okay, sorry about that. So I went back to a previous version of the data wave resource pack where the lamp or the the trapdoors are still lamps, but instead of letters we have numbers on here. So we can see we have what we'll have entered when we clock this in as serial data, analog serial. We will have five, ten, and then we will see what's this? Four, thirteen. So it'll go five, ten, four, thirteen. So here we will see 5, 10, 4, 13, or, or sorry, it'll go 5, 10, 4, 13 like that, sorry. Anyway, so when we clock this here, what'll happen is it'll allow the, si the signal to go through, the analog signal through, and then it delays it by two ticks. Then what it does is it goes through this transmission line, 
which is an, a very efficient analog transmission line, where the, it's one tick per 15 signal strength, for any 15 signal strength, which is nice. So you enter one here, and it'll come out here, or, or you enter one signal strength, it'll come in here, come through here, go through this one only and not that one. So you'll get out one signal strength every time. And so it's a, it's a very nice busing technique. I'm sure you guys have seen it. Um, and then over here, what happens is we have a little analog cell here. And then we have a way of clearing the cell here with the reset line. And then here we have a way of actually letting the data from the analog data, come, serial data coming in. And we have a way of latching it into that memory cell to show the value. So what this delay is, is this delay is just like that delay over there on top where it's timed for the delay in the transmission line plus the delay required to hold this open. So let's clock it and we follow it out here. And you will see we have a five, a 10, a four, and a 13, just like that. So let's change up some of the values. So this time we're going to send 10 again, 10, 8, 10, 8, 2, and 14, I believe, or 10, 8, 14, 2, yeah, 10, 8, 14, 2. So let's clock it. Now we have a 10, a 10, oh, whoops, my bad. That is completely my fault. We got to clear it first. Okay, let's try that again. 10, 8, 14, 2. 10, 8, 14, 2. So let's clear it and try to actually get a good, a good look at it as it streams that data in. So what I'll do is I will. Pretty cool, right? Let's do it one more time and let's watch it over here. So it streams in and then it clocks it and then boom, comes through. And then it's lossless, so we have 10, 8, 14, 2. So this works every time. So here's the thing. This is two pit two ticks per four bits. So it's one tick every two bits. So you could say this is two bits per tick, which is nice. This is two, two bits per tick that we're able to send. It's double the data that we're able to send the signal, the serial, where it's one tick per bit here, or one bit per tick, I guess I should say. This is two bits per tick. What would be ideal is to be able to get four bits per tick by creating one bit, uh, tick per, or four ticks, or, or, sorry, four bits per tick serial. And that would require being able to encode data at one tick every four bits. And that's kind of hard because comparators don't like to work on a one tick pulse, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so let's say I have um, some analog signal coming in like this, you know, bam. It's coming into my comparator here, but first what I want to do is separate it like that. Okay, what I'm gonna do is for this example, we're just going to expand this. Shoot. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to try to recover the signal out of this. What we should be able to do is turn this off, right? That should be able to turn off. But that, that repeater doesn't turn off ever. It won't turn off. It'll turn off when you put that to two ticks.
So we gotta find a mechanic that'll allow one one tick to allow four bits through. And the reason you're able to say it's four bits is because zero through 15 is 16 states and two to the four is 16. So four bits is the amount of data held in one analog signal. So I'm hoping to be able to actually do something useful with this stuff, but uh, I'm just messing around with it for now. And let me know if you guys liked the video and I'll see you next time. Bye.